Hi there, I'm Tony Glynn and we're up in Fairley. We're catching up with David Giddings of Meadows Lee Angus and Sheep Genetics. Now they're all bred on the hills up there behind me. Survivability is paramount. Well, we've arrived in time for the weaning muster of the cows and calves off the Tussock country. We'll see them weigh up the cows and calves and then head down to the Mackenzie Basin calf sale at Tamuka where Meadows Lee clients will bring forward 70 to 80% of the Angus and Angus cross calves on offer. So let's go and meet David and his team. Well, we're inland from Timaru. We're, um, we're actually on the main road from Christchurch to Queenstown. So a lot of people will probably have, uh, have seen our home property, um, which is uh, at about 1,200 feet above sea level. Um, and that was the, that's the original Meadowsley property. The family uh, have been here and started the Romney Stud in 1926. Yep. So that's 80 something years, so uh, a fair bit of history. Um, we have a, a hill block uh, called Berrydale, which is a further 5 k's inland. Um, it it is, uh, runs from 1,500 to 2,000 feet. Has more rainfall up there, around about 40 inches versus 32 at Meadersley. Um, and has uh, some tussock country on it. And we also have 250 acres of stony flats at the base of that. Um, that it's around 1500 feet altitude and um, is very useful wintering country. We're running around about 8,000, uh, 8 to 9,000 stock units um, at, at currently, so that's really um, on a ewe flock of around 2,000, which are, are all stud ewes. Started the Angus stud in 985 um and have been able to build that up actually to uh to 300 cows we are trying to breed a hill country bull that is uh run on in south highland native tussock country yeah. and we actually graze those cows out on our neighbor steve kerr's property for the winter the type of animals emerged there thicker deep bodied easy doing cattle carrying good fat levels going into the winter um, good constitution, bone, and, and plenty of motor room, plenty of uh, middle in them. Steve Kerr, you're uh, Boundary Meadows Lee here, and, and you winter their cows. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What's the story uh, there? Oh, we take all these mixed age cows, and uh, yeah, we run them out in the hill. Oh, yeah, they're, they're there over the winter, and yep. um, yeah, we just keep them up high in the top blocks. Uh, they run around there, we don't feed them, there's no hay or supplementary feed. Um, and yeah, and they stay on the hill blocks. We've got younger cattle of our own that around the paddocks uh, we, yeah, and really just use them as a tool for grazing the blocks out and really just, you know, keeping quality feeding them for the sheep. Yeah. So out uh, on the hill this year would be cold, hard country. Yeah, we can get a lot of snow through the winter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we see several falls a year. Sometimes a few inches, sometimes it's a foot or two. So. Yeah. But yeah, no, they seem to so push through it and forage around. And prepare them to, for some of the places they're going, like to Braemar and that? that they yeah, that's right. To? That's, yeah. The guys that buy bulls from these cows, it's, they go into a very similar environment, so yeah, it's a good yeah. test to, yeah. to see how they go. And yeah, no, they come off the hill good these days. So, you know, like we're saying, the first year or two, there was a few light cows showed up, but they've just been culled out of the system. And, and now, they, as you can see, they come off the hill good now in good order, they yeah. handle it well. And as soon as those calves are big enough to walk back up the road, we take them back and put them back out in the hill. We've uh, just bought the um, Angus cows down from up in the hills here at Steve Kerr as we graze up there. Yeah, and then go through and condition score all the cows and and um, and weigh them, collate it back to, uh, to what sort of calves they're bringing out. So if they come in and they're giving us uh, a good healthy calf and, and um, they may be lower in condition score, then that shows us that they're putting it all into their calf. And then you might get a, a couple of the big tubby ones that come through and and they've got lighter calves, so that can be a, a culling sort of regime. They looked all right there today, but it's uh, just a, another scale that we can use rather than just the weight alone for um, giving a record really of, of how, the, how the cattle are coming out of the uh, calving really. Just gives us a bit more information to go through rather than having a, a big framed cattle that weighs heavy, could be skinny you see, and it, uh, on the paper it, it looks all right, but yeah. in practice it's, uh, she's not doing so well really. The guys will see a bit more benefit in using yeah. it and it's, yeah, it's becoming a bit of a standard practice really. We just tag them at birth and tag and weigh as they drop, so um, yeah, the cow's temperament's uh, pretty important, for me especially, but uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, if there's any uh, ones that are a bit suspect they go down the road, but they've got them pretty well set now, so yeah, yeah they're, they're good to deal with. Yeah, you want them to be a, a good mother and, and you know, show a bit of passion for them, but uh, yeah, 
there's no need for them to be climbing on top of you and, and putting the dirt in, so yeah. yeah. Bit of breathing down the neck's all right, but uh, any more than that, and it's yeah, down the road. So If we've got it sorted out through the breeding here, then it takes, they don't have to worry about it when they buy the bulls into them, so yeah. And it doesn't matter what, anything else, the high growth or anything, it, it's irrelevant if they haven't got good temperament. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's the thing that really um, I go for. I like a, a good thick bull, yeah. um, good head. I think um, I'm a bit worried about the, where the anchors are heading in that direction. I think a lot of the heads are getting too long and narrow. And uh, I think I like to see a good muzzle and good, yeah. good jaw. And they've got to have good feet because they've got to be able to walk. Yeah. And a uh, good thick, strong bull. I think they're a good type for our country. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, we, our cows are still in the same country they would have been 50 years ago. So, yeah. um, you know, perhaps some of the hill countries improved, but then we're, the breed of sheep that everyone's running now, they're uh, eating a lot more of that um, better type of quality feed anyway. They're eating out from under the cows. So the cows have got to probably work harder now if uh, anything compared to, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, isn't it, that, that, that both with the Romneys and with the Angus, that the type of, of animal that's emerged through this program is more like what they what they were like a number of years ago. You know, they were thicker, they were deeper, they were stronger, um, both the Angus and the Romneys, and that's really where, where we seem to be coming back to. We want to get the right animals to go out in the industry from here. We want stock that will shift. If they can come through the system that we've got here, we're confident that they'll, they'll shift and do the job on other properties. Yeah. Uh, stud breeders have been criticised in the past for running their animals too easy uh, on too good a country and uh, you know we're totally commercially focused here so that you know that's not going to happen here. We're known for our, our cold dry summers and long cold winters so we can you never get under a 90 day winter up there and it can be minus five minus ten degrees for months on end. Yeah, the older cows, they, they do it pretty tough in the winter from now on, they, they get it pretty tough, they get a bit of snow tussock and a bit of scenery to live on and um, they'll, they'll go through the winter like that. Yeah. Um, Did you carve a bit later? Yeah, we, we put the bull out on the 4th of December, so it's, it is a bit later than a lot. Uh, and that's just due to when our grass starts growing in the spring, really. Yeah. If we went any earlier, there'd be nothing for them to eat, so it was... That's what dictates it really. They carve on their own, um, uh, yeah, out in the blocks, and they'll they'll carve up to um, uh, 2,600 feet. I should be using meters, but I'm not. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, the lake's at um, 1,700 feet. Whoa! We start on the run of the Braemar Station cattle, the Mackenzie family. Off the shores of Lake Pukaki, we have 23 in the top cut. They look nice, stretchy calves, plenty of fish, good loins, and they use the Metasley bulls there. Buys the top size out of the Metasley stud sales. There we go. Calves, they come in a weight of 281 kilos. Good. 281 kg. So a 47, seven straight and go. Six. They, yeah, I was, I was happy with them today. You know, the, the weights came out well. I haven't worked out the average, but it was uh, the heaviest. Pen was certainly up there with one of the best we've had. We try and average over 230 k's for the steers. Um, the last few years we've been closer to 240, which we're pretty happy with. Yeah, the tops are, are at 280, 290. Um, probably wouldn't want to get a lot bigger. All over, selling at 730. Always go for the positive fats. Um, that's a pretty important part of the operation. Sappy skin sort of things. Um, yeah, like I say, they've got to be able to fend for themselves and that the Meadowsley stuff seems to do it for us. They can live off, um, at any time of year, they can live off a lot or, or as little feed as you can give them sort of thing and that's, um, that's pretty important because you can get anything thrown at you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, no, very happy with the um, Meadowsley bulls I've been buying. I've been buying off David for... 12 years I think it is, um, yeah, since his first spring bull sale. Must and, be something uh, that you like there. Yeah, yeah, I like, just like the, the type of bulls he produces, they're um, not extreme um, in any respect, they're, they're um, probably, in fact, they're probably smaller than some of the bulls around at, at uh, sale time, but um, yeah, they've just got the, the right characteristics for what I want here. You wouldn't want anything too big on this country? No, definitely. The, the shorter they are and closer to the ground they're, they're made, a bit like me, the better, yeah. I reckon. And uh, yeah, 
positive fats is a, is a very um, you know, big high thing on, on the list. I go through the catalogue and um, that's the first thing I check for through all the bogs is they've got to have positive fats because they've got to be able to survive on this country. Yep. And my cows, are, you know, winter with no supplements or anything like that here, so um, they've got to be able to look after themselves in all sorts of weathers. It can be very dry or it can be very wet. It can be a bit of everything here through the winters and that sort of thing here. And, and um, yeah, it's just to throw anything at us. And, I mean, there's a lot of talk about trying to get cattle that will grow faster. It sounds like you're going to make more money if you, you know, if your steers grow faster. And growth seems to be something that you should have. Yeah. But on the other side of the coin, you know, with, with the females that you, you're keeping in your herd, um, you know, a high growth animal will eat more. And so, the, you know, and a high growth animal also tends to be a bigger animal. So guys have got to think, uh, you know, where they're going to run these cattle. And, and most people, when you talk to them and ask them, you know, what, how are you feeding your cows these days? I say, well, to be honest, these new high-performance sheep that we've got will clean out a lot of this cattle country. And our cows probably get less to eat than they used to. And, you know, they're up on that hill, but it's, there's just not as much tag on it as there used to be because of the, of the new sheep, you know. The sheep yeah. are such good foragers, the Romdales or whatever they've got up there. And so in a lot of cases, the, the cows are not getting any more to eat. In fact, probably we're having to work harder. And so, you know, to get profitability out of, out of a cow herd, you've got to get them in calf and get them in calf early, and they've got to do that every year for 10 years. So what tends to happen in our environment is these higher performance cows um, are struggling to get enough to eat up there because they've got a bigger appetite, and yet we don't have any more for them to eat, so they're in a lighter condition. And so they come down and carve in a lighter condition and they don't cycle again quick enough to get back in calf. So they give back in calf but maybe on the second cycle. And then the following year the same thing happens and they'll drop out of our system because we're only, only having the bulls out for two cycles. So you might have, you know, very good genetics potentially in this cow but she's dry as a three year old, as a third calver. Yeah. So, you know, we've had to pull these figures back and, and make some sense out of the, out of the middle of the road type of cattle that will produce for us um, consistently and sustainably, really, in that environment. And, and they are not high performance figured cattle. Uh, they're just good middle of the road type cattle that carry good fat can, covers on them so they can stay in good condition. They can live on that hill without having a big appetite. They run efficiently out there, they can come down still in good nick, they have a good calf, and the day the bull goes out, they're back in calf again, just like that. And, and those cattle will do that for 10 years. And they, these are going to be easy cattle for farmers to run on hill country. It's what the Angus is known for, you know. So by really tweaking up the production, and, and that includes higher milk production, you know, if you've got a, a, a cow that's genetically high in milk production, she needs to eat more grass. And if you haven't got more grass, she'll genetically try and still produce that milk so she tears that body weight off, her, off herself and she becomes skinnier and she can't get back in calf again. So you have to ask yourself, you know, what is it you're trying to do with these cattle? Yeah, we have Angus cattle just to do a bit of a job for us. Uh, try and have a low input system. They um, go through the winter usually with minimal feed. Yep. Um, calve in the spring and then they feed uh, feed off the of spring growth and we quit the calves in this time of the year. Um, we've got into keeping a lot more heifers than we used to and being a bit harder on our young cows coming in um, and that seems to have tightened up our calf performance quite good. Yeah. Um, what have we been in cattle since the 70s? Um, and we've always been black. Um, black seems to look after us. Market seems to be pretty strong. Um, five Star Beef and Co. Just sort of underpins the black market. So um, we're trying to trying to achieve a calf weight of about a 260 to 280. Uh, we usually have a pen that goes close to 300, uh, which is pretty sappy. Yep. heavy calves um, yeah, and then the cents per K works out quite good as well. Yep. They're a wee bit slow in the spring because it was a wee bit colder and wetter than we're used to but uh, they had a good spell of hot weather and uh, yeah, they've, they've come up not too bad. Yep. Um, 
like I say, they're, they're sort of slotting into that target weight range that we were hoping for, so generally pretty pleased. Uh, and hopefully the buyers are, they seem to chase them along, so so no, pretty happy. Um, yeah, no, they happy with the shape and, and growth. Uh, we've, we've shied off the heavy growth um, type cattle because with our system in winter and um, low input system, the high growth is, is more work. Yeah. Uh, maybe you get more growth, but you get more work, and um, and we need that fat in the system and the cow to milk off her back a wee bit. Uh, and so we've yeah, the cattle we've been using have been giving us that. We regularly use a meadowsly over our heifers. Uh, they carve down reasonably easily and not too much extra uh, care. So uh, seems to fit the system. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, we seem to get not a bad run out of them. Oh, Middlesley bulls have been used at the Grampians probably before my time. I've been there 11 years and they were used before that. Um, we continue to use them. They're, they're very easy um, care bull. They're um, you know, nice and quiet, um, very good growth records um, and a very good recording system that, that David does there. Yeah. Uh, we put them across our, our first calving heifers for that reason, the, the, we buy a low birth weight bull and we get um, a very good calf off that heifer. We're selling them today for around the 200 kilo mark, which is not bad for a weaned calf off a heifer. We're starting this black white herd uh, mainly for in our run country and, and more out into the hacker. We're sort of developing out there, so we're going to have a different herd out there. Yep. And then that'll be mated back to a black. Yep. Mm, so we'll hopefully just keep a hand in both markets. Um, and try and just you know, pick up that extra dollar with the black white face. People do seem to be chasing the the black and the black white face. Uh, five star underpins yeah. that, so yeah. um, we seem to take a hit of about fifty or sixty dollars on a calf between the black and the Hereford. The black bulls are a different kettle of fish, so we need a, a much lighter birth weight. So we try and keep down around the, the two, around about two, one and a half, two if we can, up to two and a half. I've had them. Um, with good milking traits and very good growth rates through the 246. I, I really look, I look strongly at that. So as long as the, the bull's got low birth weight, but um, those growth figures, um, it does flow through to what we sell here because there are people that are buying those to take them on. So um, while we're not, we're not just looking for a, to get that heifer and calf, I want, I want good growth with her as well. So, and he has to look the part. I don't just, I don't, uh, I take, I do study all the figures and then go down there, and if he doesn't look the part and got the figures, well, he won't get through, so. Uh, and we do buy, um, I put a, a, I buy a good bull off David as well to go across um, cows in our Hereford herd that are maybe a wee bit off type and colour and markings or developing traits that we don't particularly like in our main line, so. Yeah. And we've got, so we have about a, probably 80, 90 cows, mixed age cows that go to a black as well. How's things going today, Hamish? Oh, I did pretty good, Tony, really, under uh, the circumstances of feed. Uh, we had a pretty good sale, really, I thought. Well, yeah, certainly the top end of our steer calves were making over seven. Um, and a lot of the calves, a lot of these lines of calves, they've come in very even, so the tops are making over seven, and the bottom cuts are sort of down around that six mark, that, uh, which is quite respectable. And guys can, you know, they can make it stack up at that level. We had one guy from the North Island who came down just especially to buy uh, Meadowsley Genetics. Yeah. So we do get guys from time to time that will chase one, one bloodline here. Yeah. He's got a good name for his bulls, they're working well for guys and, and they're certainly uh, lasting, which yeah. is a, a big thing when you're paying reasonable money for size. This is one opportunity to get, was over a thousand Angus and Angus here of his steer calves today, yeah. of well bred, of genuine tussock country, so a great opportunity to buy station cattle. You're not, you're not chasing the American genetics? No, we, we, we're definitely not. I mean, our, our policy is that these animals must be, uh, be able to survive and produce um, in the New Zealand environment. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't believe that bringing cattle in from America um, will give us those traits. Um, I'm happy for other breeders to do that, and possibly we can buy some of that progeny further down the track, but certainly we won't bring any blood like that. We want proven uh, New Zealand genetics that can handle this environment. This is a tough environment and our clients are in tough country and they need to know that uh, these cows can handle this condition. Got enough fat 
to store enough energy to get through these tough periods. Yeah. And uh, and that you know that's our New Zealand environment. We we've got enough genetics here in New Zealand to be able to do that. So hard to find genetics for yourself there. It's so well. Well, it is. Having said that, it's hard hard to find because we. I mean, we there's a, a lot of traits that we are very strong on, and our herd is very strong in fats. We've got probably some of the best positive fats of any herd in in Australasia. And uh, and it's the same with the scrotal. Scrotal is very important to us because it denotes. Uh, in the females, how quick they'll hit the puberty, and that how quick they're gonna, you know, reproduce for us as two-year-olds, and generally stay fertile over their lifetime. So you know those traits are very important to us. Um, but you know it's a balance that we're after that'll suit this country, and they're not necessarily trait leaders or you know in the top 10% for Australasian traits. They can just be quite dangerous in this country. A couple of nice balls out there in the front paddock, and uh, you must be fairly proud of them having them out beside the mailbox. Yeah, well, it's interesting. They're um, they're uh, both by a homebred sire, very strong uh, in, in our own bloodlines. The uh, better of the two bulls, if you like, the one we prefer is um, it was uh, by a yearling bull out of one of our two-year-old heifers. Uh, he weaned the heaviest calf out of the whole herd. He was the heaviest bull at the 400 day. He had the biggest eye muscle of any bull we had on the property. And he's the thickest and deepest bull we've got. So, you know, it was a no-brainer not to keep that. Yeah. The other fellow is um, by the same sire, uh, slightly different bloodline on the female side. But yeah, these, these are the type of animals that seem to suit us. They're earlier maturing. They carry a lot of condition. They've got a tremendous back end on them and they're just always in good nick. We'd like to think that um, our clients are going to get 10 years out of their cows. So 10 years of production on hill country, a cow having a calf every year for 10 years, nice and early, good calf, and you're making money. So, you know, these, these, these bulls also have to have longevity. So this bull, these two bulls we've got out here, their, uh, their grandsire, is down there rising 11 years old and, and if you want to be profitable over a 10 year period with cattle we suggest that you know in hill country that you take these more moderate type cattle with the easy doing traits and they'll produce for you sustainably over a long period and you'll make money.